Please, sir. Whether you need to... Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury. Only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Have a drink and enjoy this night, for it could be our last. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. but some questions remain. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Econ he deserves to be. As you wish, my lord. Good. Now go. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then? Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. 
But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson. To make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the Reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor souls survive at all. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him.
It's on to us! A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing. I cannot enter. I think this passage could lead me close to Aloysius Dawson's mansion. Cannot enter. I can't believe I'm doing this. Give me your blood! 
cannot enter. Locked, all right.
again. What are the cards it's locked, trying to right. tell us? Jonathan Reed. At last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. My name is Usher. Usher Talltree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, to be precise. I'm really glad we met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me a truth. The cards told you to expect me? Yes, they tell me everything. They've told me of your unquenchable thirst for blood. Be wary, Ekon. I've heard such a rich diet can be bad for the heart. Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts. Readings which blackened his heart. Can you read the cards for me? Are you sure you want to know what they will reveal? Yes, I am. It will cost you 150 shillings. Here is the money. Fallen Tower. A man of science. A proud fool. Taking the wrong path to achieve greatness. A secret well hidden. Do you require medical attention? I'm fine, thank you, Jonathan. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander. Yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. The Red River, a song in the dark, the whispers of a sun. So it's many locked. signs to interpret.
Dawson's mansion. Here I am at last. But the question remains. Am I ready to make a dying man my progeny? Finally you're here, Dr. Reed. What took you so long? I had to pass several of your barricades and outposts to access your mansion, sir. Death, pestilence surround us, and time is against me. I see you've gathered some of the most expensive, albeit experimental, blood transfusion equipment available. All this could be so useful in a hospital. Yes, yes. Since Lord Redgrave sent me a doctor to perform my conversion, I thought you might find some of these devices useful. Most thoughtful. But tonight I'm not here as a physician. But I feel reassured that a specialist such as yourself would help me to escape the Reaper. Very well. But before I proceed, I have a few questions for you. If you must, but be quick, for I don't have much time left in this life. First of all, I need to be sure that you know exactly what is going to happen to you, sir. I can assure you I'm as informed as any man can be. I have planned for this moment, Dr. Reed. Planned very carefully. I'm the only vampire in the room for now. So please indulge me. All right, all right. What is it you wish to ask? I will become your maker. Do you understand what that means? Well, I certainly won't consider you my liege or some such drivel. You can be assured of that. You'll need to feed on warm blood. Blood from mortals. How do you feel about that? I'm rich, Dr. Reed, and powerful. I'm sure I'll be able to acquire all the blood I need without ever having to sully my own hands. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? What I do know is that I'll crush anyone or anything that would dare to oppose me. Let's move on, then. Please, I'm cold and tired. I feel my life waning with every moment. But first, before you embrace immortality, what would you do with such a gift? That's a rather impertinent question, Dr. Reed. And I will do as I please. Answer me all the same. What will your first action be as an immortal? To save London. I will finance the most efficient quarantine ever seen. I will build a wall that will separate the sick boroughs from the healthy ones. Who gave you the right to decide the fate of thousands of people? My money. My money and my pending immortality gives me the needed authority, Doctor. I'm a businessman. I'm used to tough decisions. You really plan to build a quarantine wall across London? Yes. It will be tall and strong, separating the wheat from the chaff. Let me guess. You mean to isolate the rich from the poor? This is a desperate measure for desperate times. England must prevail, Doctor, no matter the cost. By doing so, you will also create two separate prisons. Come, sir. An eminent doctor like yourself knows that such radical measures have proved efficient in the past.
Quarantine is not a bad idea, medically speaking. But I'm convinced this epidemic will not be contained by mere walls. As long as the right people are on the right side of the wall, that's all that matters. But you can't guarantee infection will not spread. Just one contagious carrier would be enough to create an apocalypse. The apocalypse is already knocking at the gate. We must be strong now! What if a new outbreak happens inside your walls? You'll have created a giant trap. That won't happen. As long as we dispose of anyone that is contaminated, as soon as they are spotted. I've heard enough. It's time to proceed. At last! All right, do what you have to do. If it hurts, so be it. I've been preparing such a long time for this. Are you ready for immortality, Mr. Dawson? Drink now. And say farewell to life as you prepare to be reborn. What do you mean, drink? What about the blood transfusion? I'm the doctor and the vampire here, so I'll give the orders. Drink, sir. Now. All right. Good. That's enough. That's enough, I said. I will not die. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, no. You will die, sir. Steal yourself. You're already in death, sir. Reduced in rank for falsely accusing a man of murder. I wonder what Inspector Albright thinks about his punishment. Is it done, Dr. Reed? Is Aloysius Dawson reborn as expected? Yes, my lord. Ascalon has a new recruit, as you ordered. Wonderful news. I've waited for this outcome for so long. Tonight you served your country, the king himself, beyond all expectation. Thank you, my lord. No, thank you, Dr. Reed. Now, 
Could you do me one last favor? Of course. What is it? Go outside and talk with that disgusting creature I saw waiting for you in front of this mansion. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll have a look. Good. I didn't kill her on the spot, for she claims to be a friend of yours. But don't you dare bring such a creature near me again. We meet again at the strangest of times, young Econ. So do you serve the Earl of Bristol now? Old Bridget? What are you doing here? Your friend, the wise Econ. She sent me to warn you. Lady Ashbury? You know her? Tell me what's going on. The lady approached me but a few nights ago, wanting to meet the sewer skulls. Once she questioned Harriet Jones, she agreed to help us. Harriet Jones is still with you then? How is she doing? Harriet remains angry, but is recovering slowly. Her mind is twisted, but at least her body is healing. Tell me what is going on. The lady asked us to keep an eye on your mortal doctor friend while you were away. We spotted the hunters. They were discussing plans to attack tonight. No time to lose, then. I must go there right away. I shall return to my den. Have you a message for the lady? Should I see her before you? Yes. Tell her I love her. Is this still unknown to her? Go now and take care, young Ekon, for the flames are rising. What is this truck? Are the vampire hunters here already? Good evening, Dr. Strickland. Have you seen any suspicious activity in the vicinity, Dr. Reed? No more than usual. This is no laughing matter, Dr. Reed. A patient of mine has been murdered. Mr. Fiddick is dead. I should have been more cautious. Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? You don't have to worry about me, Dr. Reed. I am here to assist you, not to be a burden. Are you all right? I heard the hospital has been attacked. As far as I know, nobody's been hurt. But who were those men? Why attack Dr. Swansea? What happened to him? We don't know. They came in, they went out. In between those two events, Dr. Swansea went missing. Maybe he just went into hiding nearby. I could have saved Mr. Fiddick if I had more time. I could have shown you all. Good evening, Dr. Ackroyd. You're the last person that I want to see right now, Dr. Reed. I see that you are as friendly as ever. Are you really going to ask me why? That would just be more evidence of your selfishness.
nations, so many of them. Will Strickland be up to the task? I wonder. my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? No. I don't feel well, actually. Despite what you think about this place, I can tell you with absolute certainty, taking this will help you recover. Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for this hospital. before my son. I die before my son, no. He needs me so much. So much. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. Throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. looking for. Mother, were you right all along? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Those bastards. What have they done to Edgar?
Ultraviolet <laughs> curtains and Ori Kelvin powder. Ah! Dr. Swansea's ah! always been a resourceful bastard. I bet he never told you he had this installed in case of a vampire attack. Says a lot about how much he trusts you. What have you done with Edgar? Don't worry. We don't kill humans. Even if your friend is deserving of a little punishment for what. What are you talking about? We know everything. Swansea and you created this bloody epidemic. You aim to unleash another disaster, just like William Marshall did. No! I'm trying to put an end to it, just like you are. You're the progeny, aren't you? Where is the monster hiding? It's still in England, isn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about. Jeffrey, please listen to me. No tricks. That shit won't work on me. We've found proof in the theater. Doris Fletcher was your first experiment. Now where is Marshall? Speak! Uh, uh. <laughs> so much for modern technology. Time for the tried and true. <laughs> Do you know what this is, beast? This is a drop of King Arthur's blood. The blood of a true defender of Britain. Stronger than your evil powers. Ridiculous. We're losing precious time. True enough. Soon I'll bring your head before your coward of a father. Fight like a man. But if you're so innocent, why does simple life burn you so much? The blood of a true defender of this land will protect you. on me. We are the guardian of justice. Prewin shall prevail. You can't accept the fact we're not enemies, can you? <laughs> we always have been, and we always will be. Of all the evils that threaten mankind, your kind are the worst. I'm not saying we could be friends, you and I. But perhaps we could collaborate to put an end to this epidemic. Never! We are pre-win. We do not negotiate. We do not compromise. There is no way you'll ever let me be, McCullum. You'll always hunt me down, won't you? There is no escape, Leech. 
Kill me now, for there is no way you can sway me to your ideals. That's where you're mistaken. I'll spare you, McCollum. I'll offer you the mercy you never offered me. What is this ruse? This is no ruse, McCollum. This is me letting you go. After all, you and I are both trying to save this poor country in our own way. I'll kill you, Reed! Next time we meet, I'll end you! See? Progress already! You called me by my name! Until the next time, goodbye, Hunter. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I know who you are, Mr. Miracle. I don't understand. Dr. Swansea's always praising your skill and your competence. Too bad you did nothing for Nurse Hawkins. What do you mean? I was the only one from the hospital to attend her funeral. I'm Milton, by the way. Milton Hooks, in case you never heard of me. I know it's not exactly the best time, but I found your wallet, Milton. Really? I almost forgot about it. Well, thanks, I suppose. I also found a photograph of you and Nurse Hawkins. That's the only picture of us that was ever taken. Thanks, Dr. Reed. It's the one bit of proof of the good times we shared. Rest assured, I'll keep your secret, Milton. Thanks. Here, take this. In appreciation. Not everyone is as open-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm afraid I do. Like everyone in this hospital. It's a sad state of affairs when even the hospital workers are worried about disease. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. There's no shame in being ill while you're in a hospital. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. I get the feeling you don't fall sick often. Well, thanks, anyway.
bloody monster. Did you kill my Pippa too? I should have known. To read. Any good news to share? Do you need any medical assistance yourself, Doctor? Yes, indeed. But don't worry, I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Sorry, Nurse Brannigan. I won't witness the great doctor you were destined to be. So Prewen never left Doris's theater after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters. Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence.
Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. Edgar. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Punctured lung, broken ribs, and internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Geoffrey McCollum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... dare to attack us in the open. What became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. Edgar, as much as I would like to believe you, I have a few concerns that require clarification. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Jonathan, I, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbridge. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my you research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. 
Just another victim of this tragedy. Yes, Edgar, you're about to die. I won't say it's fair, but I can't say you don't deserve it. Your words hurt deeply, Jonathan. But they come from a friend. I... I helped you, remember? Yes. I remember. The second I saw you in that bar, I knew we would accomplish great things, you and I. I thought you were a vampire, till you brandished that cross. You looked so lost when you opened that door. For a few seconds I thought you were there to kill me. I think we were both afraid. Now, I feel true fear. Is there an afterlife? What will become of me when I'm dead, Dr. Reed? I really cannot say, Dr. Swansea. In the end, life betrays us all. 